Alright guys, welcome to the second um, part of the Subtopic 1.1 Properties and Uses of Materials video for Year 11 Chemistry. Okay, so in the last video we looked at um, properties of materials and we also looked at size of materials. Now what we're going to be looking at is how we separate substances. All right, so because materials can have such a wide variety of properties, um, there are a number of ways we can separate them. Okay, so there's filtration, distillation, evaporation, and chromatography. So I'm just going to go briefly through each of those. So filtration is where you have an insoluble solute. So a solute is the thing that you dissolve in a liquid in a solvent. A filter is used to allow the solvent to pass through, but the solute remains behind. So basically a filter is, is just like a grate, okay, or it's like a sieve that you might use in the kitchen at home where you're draining out, um, you know, vegetables or, any pasta or something like that as well. So you've just got these holes that allows the liquid, the solvent to pass through and the solid remains behind. Um, when we're using filtration, then we use filtration paper, uh, what happens is that we have such tiny, tiny holes that it only allows the little small molecules of the solvent to go through and the larger molecules which are insoluble stay behind. Now this video I've got in the background here is actually showing that there are natural filters in the world. These are actually oysters over here uh, on the right hand side. So these are oysters and they naturally are filtering all the um, sediment out of the water there. So you can see over time, you can see the clock in the background as it's actually uh, moving through. So the oysters over time are actually naturally filtering out the water. All right. You can use filtration as a method if you want to collect either the liquid or the solid. So it's really good. It's probably one of the simplest filtration methods, that, uh, sorry, simplest separation methods that we use. Distillation um, is when you then have two or more what we call miscible liquids. So miscible liquids are ones that dissolve in each other. Okay, So they're separated based on their differences in boiling point. So um, the key principle of this is that you're going to be using that property of boiling point where you supply heat to the particles. The particles will start to vibrate. Right? Secondary bonds holding them together will break because the particles are vibrating and then they separate into a gas form. Right now, the weaker the bonds between the molecules, the easier it is to heat them up and separate them out. So what happens is over here, the substances are heated up. The substance with the lowest boiling point will start to heat and turn into a gas particle first. Those gas particles rise up. We record the temperature here in the thermometer, and then they come over here through what's called a condenser. This is basically um, hollow through the middle. This is where the gas particles go through. And on the outside, you have cold water, which is flowing through. That lowers the temperature inside the condenser, gets the gas particles to turn back into a liquid. They condense, that's why it's called a condenser. And then we can collect them over here. And what we collect at the end is called the distillate from the distillation. So distillation is really good when you've got substances that have a reasonable amount of difference in boiling point. So you want to have at least probably 5 to 10 degrees is a minimum for separation. Otherwise, it becomes quite hard to actually make sure you get your pure sample at the end. Then we've got evaporation. This is when you want to get a soluble solute out of a solvent. So what I mean by that is so you've got something that's actually dissolved in a, in a solvent, in normally water or a liquid, and you want to get that solid out. So what you do is you heat the solvent till it starts to evaporate. Okay, You don't heat it too quickly, you're just trying to lightly get rid of the um, solvent that's there. The secondary bonds holding the solvent molecules together break, and that, that turns into a gas, a bit like in distillation. But this time, because those molecules are just disappearing, the solid stays behind, and you're left with the solid in a, uh, the solute in a solid form. So this is really only useful if you want to collect the um, solid um, at the end, rather than the uh, liquid that it's dissolved in. Salt fields here are a really good example of this. They naturally have these um, salty lakes, which are just the sun evaporates off the water and leaves behind the pure salt here. So that's an example of how we use evaporation in the real world. Chromatography um, is where we separate substances based on their differences in polarity. Okay, so um, very, very quick, you're gonna be looking at chromatography a lot more, um, particularly when you get to year 12, so I'm not gonna go into a lot of this here. But basically, um, I always liken chromatography to a, a car driving over a road. Okay, You have something which doesn't move, which is the road. That's what we call the stationary phase. You have the car that goes over the top of it. All right? That's the mobile phase. That's what goes through. Okay, Now, the car carries things with it. All right? So the passengers inside are the things that the mobile phase carries with it. So here in the case of this paper chromatography we're looking at, we have the paper there. Okay, That's the stationary phase. We have these three dots of ink on the side here. 
Okay, and then we have the mobile phase, which is the liquid here, just the water, which is moving its way up the paper. So the mobile phase here is carrying the components with it. The components are, um, are attracted to the stationary phase at different rates. So you can see the blue, for example, on each of them is moving up really quickly. So the colors separate and the blue is right up the top. That means the blue is really strongly attracted to the mobile phase and moving quickly and it's not strongly adsorbed to the stationary phase, the paper at all. That's why it moves so quickly, all right? The general rule for this is like dissolves like, okay? We don't like using that term too much, but um, so if something is polar, it will be attracted to a polar mobile phase or a polar stationary phase. Again, we'll look at that a lot more in year 12. There is a video on chromatography if you want to have a look at that as well on my website. But for the moment, if you just understand that we use it to separate substances based on the differences in polarity, um, that'll be fine. Now, at this point, you might have no idea what polarity is. That's okay as well. Um, there is another video on my website as well, all about an introduction to polarity in molecules. That's normally something we look at in the next topic when we're looking at um, covalent bonding and um, covalent molecules. So I just put this little flow chart together there to help you out with um, working out which um, method you want to use to separate a, a mixture of materials. I've summarized each of those different methods in this video over here as well that you might want to watch. But basically you have a look at your mixture, are they soluble in each other? If they're not, all right, that's what's called a heterogeneous, all right, a heterogeneous um, mixture. So if there's a solid in there, then yes, you filter it out. If, there's, um, if you're not, then you use a separating funnel, okay? A separating funnel is where you have two layers, something like oil and um, water. You can easily separate them out using a separating funnel. If they are soluble in each other though, that's called a homogeneous mixture. So if you're trying to get a solute out, which is the solid, then you use evaporation. If you're not trying to get the solute out, do they have significantly different boiling points? If they do, I'd use distillation. If they don't, you could use something like chromatography. Distillation is just a bit of a quicker and easier method than chromatography, but you can use that as well. So this might be a really good one to kind of just refer back to any time um, you want to work out what you want to do to separate substances. Okay, so that's the end of subtopic 1.1. Um, um, hopefully this has been fairly straightforward for you. This one has just been looking at how we separate substances. Have a bit of an idea of each of these different methods. I know I didn't talk about separating funnel, you don't really need to worry about that. But just have a bit of an idea of what instance you would use each of these um, separation techniques. And if um, you've got any questions, just ask below. Thanks.